But it's time for everyone's favorite segment, and it is called Dave Meltzer's, and also, by the way, uh, Stacy Cornette, Queen Cornette's favorite segment of the week. Shout her out for listening. <laughs> and it is called Dave Meltzer's Dumb Moment of the Week. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, David Cher friend of the show he just doesn't know it great guy never met him um <laughs> but he goes uh so mike johnson reports a story on ricochet uncle dave tries to be relevant and questions it sean rossap then confirms mike's report wheels on the bus go round and round so <laughs> just a, a little uh shot at um, yeah. Meltzer, which is what we live for guys it's what we live for here um so then speaking of ricochet who we spoke about way earlier in the show we covered that entirely it'll be its own clip but um dave Meltzer on ricochet so uh, according to every news source right and this is what david shearer was just referring to ricochet, ricochet is leaving yeah he's leaving bro like it's been confirmed he he even tweeted under people like ryan satin who's like yo when ricochet leaves he should get a video package like this da 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 ricochet commented under it did you see um, that video package by the way or that little video that ryan satin yeah uh, put course, out there yeah, about yeah. it was ass ricochet <laughs> cannot promo i had to laugh because i was just like look at everybody trying their best to show us that ricochet's got something you going know, on yeah. no it's too late no i would we just put everything. him with like I would just put him with like a hot girl and just have him doing flips and baby face and let her talk. Um, but either way, yeah, Dave Meltzer just says, according to those, I'm close to uh, the situation, uh, whatever. Um, everything is uh, Tony Khan up in the air. So he's saying it's up in the air. This is my opinion on this. Meltzer's known, and I've called it out a billion times, and I know that he's heard of these segments. I know he knows about Dave Meltzer, Dumb Moment of the Week. We always call him out for what? He stooges everything AEW. He's trying to now do the opposite of it. Oh, it's up in the air because he stooged Edge, he stooged Adam Cole and Danielson and all that shit. So he's just trying to not stooge this Ricochet thing, but him saying, oh, it's up in the air. On the WWE side, bro, is what he's claiming. He doesn't know shit from W. So they're just saying that to him because they just they just know he's going to report this dumb shit, and um, I don't know. It's uh, I think we're going to start knowing about these WWE releases months in advance or whatever. Like maybe not months all the time, but we'll know about them. And why do you think that is? How do I think that is? Or no, no, why? no, I said why do you think that is? Yeah, because it's just a new regime, if you will, and instead of just like future endeavor, yeah, uh, it, it's just sort of it's just like okay. These guys can leak it out. Like if Ri if Ricochet gets asked or it gets leaked out, okay. Like they're not going to. They're treating it more like a sport, like WWE is. I don't know. And then also, like now, if I'm getting really like psychoanalytical, they could be looking at this as just also it benefits them for storyline purposes too. Like the whole ego Ethan Page thing. He's like, I didn't sign, and they didn't announce it until they did that segment where he right. came out with no music and got all of his demands met and everything. I don't know. Like, and it also helps the talent. If everyone knows Ricochet is going to be a big free agent, he's not just going to go to AEW right away. Maybe he will if Tony gives him the biggest bag, but it's like there might be a bunch of other feds that are like, well, shit, we can pool this money together and get him on this date and he can do this date and then maybe he'll go to Japan and do this date and we don't really know but I just think it's more amicable and easier to how, how do you explain it like Vince is an asshole is basically what I'm getting at okay mm -hmm. Triple H and them aren't as big of assholes about this and they know they they allow these guys to take control of their careers and you know what I mean they're not so stingy about like you can't speak about this you can't do this you can't say this you can't they're sure. probably like, no, do your thing. If you're leaving, you're leaving. Let us know and make it public if you want or whatever. You know what I mean? And WWE, uh, yeah. WWE did a great thing. All they had to do was look at like six major um, wrestling journalists and completely ignore all six of them. And that's how you keep the secret. If you, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to tell anybody anything. You don't have to give anybody anything, and they're going to go right back to the like the '80s style of promoting, where it's just like you don't know anything, and we've got all the cards. And that's how and, it should be. And the, yeah, and the secret sauce is like let's stop telling everybody every goddamn thing. 
Yeah. No, I agree, dude. Either way, um, but Meltzer's dumb because if they're if WWE is telling them they're it's up in the air, it means that it's not up in the air. They tell them the opposite. So we talked about this earlier too with Tony Khan and his conspiracy theories. The black helicopters, they're coming down. They're surrounding Daly's place. Don't look at my private plane or my punter. Okay, so AEW Neckbeards tweets this out. WWE and their Shout out Neckbeards. Ways. Shout out Neckbeards, one of the goats. Common Neckbeards W. And uh, so Tony Khan, though, this is the quote tweet from Dave. Dave Meltzer s- quote tweeted and said this to someone. Sorry, but the ratings I listed were accurate. The others were not. They were supplied by WWE to the reporter. Sorry for people mad because everything I slated was correct. And this is not a new story. A new story. It's a story that blah, blah, blah. And Dave insinuates what Ryback was insinuating earlier and uh, saying WWE, which I have the story somewhere actually, but they were basically, he said that WWE was in cahoots with or pumping out false information to give false numbers on AEW. Mm -hmm. And then Tony Khan goes, these are the same predatory business practices that Jim Crockett promotions and many former wrestling territories faced in the 1980s. (laughs) I'm very grateful to all of you and Mortimer Mouse who watch AEW and AEW is here to stay. And uh, Tony Khan and then Dave, after Tony Khan quote tweeted this, Dave swiftly deleted his tweet. Because this is like, he's he's claiming shit that like he's gonna get sued for. He's a fucking idiot. I don't know. So tons of conspiracies. It's always conspiracy theories when it comes to AEW. I've pointed it out so many times. They're always yelling bots, and then they're the ones using bots. We've even seen the Observer bots. We've covered it on the show, Pro Wrestle Clips. If you haven't seen it, but uh, awful. I just want your thoughts on basically all of this here. Dave and Tony here being Alex Jones. Yeah. This is a real peculiar tweet, and he deleted it. He deleted it. Are you talking about Tony, sorry, or Dave's? I don't know, both of them. He, yeah, because Dave yeah. deleted his when Tony quote tweeted it. Why? Because this is like libel. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but God damn it. This is, they're walking on. One of my predictions uh, for t- 2024 when I made my little predictions uh, list on Twitter was uh, that Tony Khan would sue Triple H, but it looks like it's going to be the other way around. Yeah, that is very libelous, and I can see why Dave uh, um, deleted it. But what proof does – you know why he deleted it? More so than the, the specter of getting sued, it's the fact that he has no proof of that. That's what's going on. He doesn't want this fucking tweet hanging out in cyberspace only to be proven wrong in the next three to four weeks. So now you made the show again because you compartmentalized this great um, little Dave thing here because I had mm-hmm. written it down in my notes <clears throat> and because I was going to riff on this and it was going to be – uh, it was going to be a focal point, and then lo and behold, I go on X, and you already did my work for me. So, um, uh, at Wrestle Purist, say most what else is new. So, <laughs> 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 so Wrestling Observer newsletter states that most in TNA had no idea of the deal TNA management cut with WWE, which is a f- they want to like, why would they know? Why and, would and management the want to tell them? Exactly. More lips sealed, but also like, even if they didn't, who gives a shit? Or they or they did know, and Dave's full of shit. But either way, it doesn't matter because what he did was Dave then comes out and at awful wrestling, shout him out. (laughs) Right here with me. So we just covered this. We just had a clip come out. I think it's me and you awful talking about how when Dave spoke about uh tony khan's tv dealings with wbd and the the word came out that tony khan was quote disappointed in the Mm. wbd deals dealings or the offer that was made to aew and then dave Meltzer goes on this semantical rant coping about well what does disappointed mean what does the word disappointed really mean i mean it's just semantics and he's just projecting and coping and seething and he's and he's going off for for 20 minutes about what does the word disappointed really mean? I mean, he wasn't disappointed. He was just, you know, not pleased. <laughs> he was, uh, you know, not very happy with the, not disappointed though. What does that mean? So it then means your sudden, website, Dave. It means you're bored. <laughs> so then five days later, Dave in dummy Meltzer. Yep. 
comes out here and does a report. Dummy. Yeah. About about TNA and goes, oh, people didn't know backstage. And also, Dave Meltzer says that the numbers he heard offered by WBD uh, for a new dealer are not disappointing. So here's the quote. I was told he wasn't disappointed at all, but at the same time, what does disappointed mean? I mean, it's just a word. <laughs> so then he goes on to, this is ex- this is what he says five days later. Yep. There was, quote, great disappointment that mm-hmm. TNA ratings following Jordan Grace's NXT appearance didn't hit the top 150. And then here's off all of this. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I know you young ones don't know, but that's the old Silver Spoon. Uh, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. What, Dave? Well, what does that even mean? Hey, did Dave talk about for 15 minutes well, what does great disappointment mean, Dave? Did you ever ask yourself what great disappointment means? His wedding night. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, no, Tony wasn't disappointed. He He's not disappointed. No, 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 no. What does disappoint? I mean, disappointed is just like a word. It's just like a word, man. It, I mean, what does it even mean, really? He wasn't really disappointed. He was just like, you know, like disappointed you know and then all of a sudden here Cape first thing AEW yeah tna was turn. really disappointed with jordan grace's for <laughs> go fuck yeah. yourself if you stupid oh See, my god and and for the people in the chat and i i know i know you already know phil but all you got to do is sit back <laughs> and wait and then within five to seven days tony khan dave melter sean mm. ross sap andrew baydala whatever the fuck his name is all these guys are 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 going to be proven wrong all you have to see don't don't react so hastily when you see these guys tweet just wait three to four to five days and you'll see the truth really really come out man you just can't make this shit up it's like you just can't make it up dude it's like it's like uh, tony khan you know he goes and calls wwe the harvey weinstein of pro wrestling and then all of a sudden he has like players on his plane signing ndas for allegations and stuff too like it could like you know right two weeks and then you got, later, you got people just... like mercedes monet and will osprey talking about we're the best wrestle and talking about like uh you know tony's talking about the wwe being the harvey weinstein well will osprey and mercedes monet they seem to be the little old victim of uh of of will uh, of, of aew so how is that any different it's just hilarious. You can't make it up. It's too. It's almost like parody. We're living in a. We're living in a yeah, is, uh, Leslie Nielsen like movie, a fucking Mel Brooks movie. You know, it's yeah. just it's so funny. So the updated policy regarding Mexican talents working on the same shows, including AEW and Forbidden Door, per Wrestling Observer. So remember when everyone tried to say this isn't true, and people came under my comments when I talked about this on the show, and when. Oh, no, this isn't true. Oh, you fell for that fake news that was... Here's Dave. Once again, Phil Marks being right again. The updated policy is that, and things are subject to negotiations with AEW. Um, CMLL and New Japan seem to be that people who have not worked for a AAA of late, but are Mexican-born, were, will be allowed to appear on shows with CMLL talent. So listen, guys. I hate being right all the in time but listen to me so except for my picks tonight at battlegrounds but <laughs> listen yeah. to me the the wrestler so we said it right tony made some deal where he signed up the lucha bros and these guys who were more affiliated with C- with triple a and mexican nor of mexican descent luchas right they signed the deal with cmll and then the rumor comes out that these talents these luchas aren't allowed to appear if cmll's on the card and everyone's like where's the lucha bros and they're not there and then we're like yeah that's what it is they're not tony signed this goofy deal so dave just confirmed it because the updated deal now with CMLL. So everyone's like, oh, you fell for that fake news. It wasn't fake news. Dave just confirmed it. The new updated deal seems to be that people who haven't worked for AAA as of late, but are bo- Mex- luchas, Mexican born, they will be allowed now to appear on shows with CMLL talent. So fuck you, Dave. Fuck you all you fucking marks trying to tell me we were wrong about that. And fuck Tony for making stupid. Why the fuck? do you have these luchas what does commander do that ray phoenix couldn't do for you like it makes no goddamn sense um figure out how to market start selling these ray phoenix masks do you know many of these masks wwe be selling so um dave goes on and says the belief is that will include forbidden door 
So we think that will include. So the Lucha Brothers might be allowed on Forbidden Door, even though they're contracted to AEW, and no one in tr- CMLL or New Japan is contracted to f- AEW. And you're not going to tell me Tony Khan's not acting like a f- Vince, monopolizing and just uh, just a f- man child with toys? Are you kidding me? This right. is a slap in the fucking face, bro. And that's what we've always said: women and luchas to him are just interchangeable. He just looks at them all as the same. He he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, Rush was a different situation as he was on the show but didn't wrestle. It is confirmed that unless things change, that Commander, since he holds the AAA Cruiserweight title, would not be allowed to work on shows with CMLL talent, nor would El Hio Del Viking go when he is healthy. If things are consistent... So, <laughs> El Hio's hurt. Yeah, that's great. Who would have f***ing thought? Um, if things are consistent, Bandito, when he's back, should fit into the category. So Bandito, this guy they signed, signed away from WWE, and he might be allowed to wrestle with the CMLL guys Tony's using because that helps AEW somehow. Are you following this awful? Like, what kind of not really um, vortex? Um, the in- most the most I ever get from uh, places like CMLL or Triple A. Is when um, Conan talks about it. Conan. Other than that, I have no interest in in Conan. Mexican wrestling as it stands now. They can definitely hook me in, but there's nothing grabbing my attention. It's CMLL. just it's just disturbing how Tony Khan misuses talent and how mm-hmm. he doesn't see value in people and how they're just clearly interchangeable like toys to him. Like he thinks that dude. So when did when do you uh, think he became a wrestling fan? When do you think Tony Khan became a wrestling fan? Probably when he was a little kid, man. Probably okay. When's like, a little kid? Do you think shit. he knows who Ed the Strangler Lewis is? I'm George sure. I'm, Schmidt, I'm sure he like you no. Know, I'm sure he knows of them and are, is somewhat semi familiar with them. Yes, I'm sure of that. That's a goddamn shame how he's able to know these people and still come up with the product he comes up with. That's yeah. Yeah. incredible to me. Um, he was booking. Sh- in high school, yeah, me too. I'd write down matches. I'd play them on video games and write them down. I, I still do Ugh. it when I play 2K. Yeah, I'm a big mark, but you it's play like... Sportsville? Yes, dude. Yeah, I okay. did. Yeah. So what made yeah. you have the time to can do... Because I just E-fed loved wrestling, game. bro. I loved... Yeah. I wanted to, like, be a... Re- no, no, I didn't do E-Fed. I'm talking... I Okay, I'd go home. People played Nintendo 64 growing up. I played PlayStation. Well, I played yeah. fucking SmackDown and shit, and I would write down... I have a brother. We'd write down matches. We'd book our it we'd go ahead we go against each other i'd go like my guys going like you know sorry people in the chat this is all a new phenomenon to me when i was a wrestling fan back in the day and i still am but when yeah. like i was growing up watching i mean there, there was no such thing as like hey i'll book my own shit. like that <laughs> no <laughs> like where does where does that shit come oh, from yeah, that's dude. i'm so curious yeah. as to how you how you millennials slash generation zers like it's because this is why I'll tell you how I started. It's because the, WW, the WWE games and shit, they didn't have like a, like what they have now is like universe mode or whatever, right? Like you play WCW and it's like, yeah, you pick a character and then you'd fight all the guys and then you right. win the belt and then it's over. So then what you do with your friends, like I remember too, I'd go to my friend's house all the time, dude. And he would like have a card written out and it was just for the game. Like they didn't have a mode where you punch in all the matches, right? You had right, to like, right, right. yeah. So he just write it out and then we'd, play them and i don't know dude it was fun man we would do we oh, would do that's how i grew okay. up yeah uh millennial not kid, fun, I guess. but i i just you boomer what you want me to call you a boomer no i'm just kidding no, i'm sorry um, at, at that age i was chasing women what do you yeah want? exactly exactly well no no we're talking yeah i mean i guess it was like right before woman time for me is like when i was okay. real writing down matches and shit. for sure dude I had, I had belts i had toys i used to have all the dolls and shit. i wouldn't open them i had like belts i was a big mark dude my whole entire life and i was always up on the it's too like like uh i was always up on like uh i'd watch wrestling tapes and stuff you know so i was always up on like japanese style everything you know what i mean and my grandfather would tape everything so i saw like tiger mask matches on tape and shit you know what i mean yeah so i was very fortunate and uh but i came like after the hulk hogan era but again i had it all on tape my grandfather taped got everything like yeah, you guys got to understand that i grew up like um in the magazine days right where it was just like they were talking about people like pedro morales and you poured yourself into those experiences now we didn't have the youtube so it was kind of hard to find a pedro morales match or an old ass dusty roads match but i just want i i want people in the chat to get a flavor of where i'm coming from 
I have no problem with modernity in professional wrestling, but there's there are some things that I've seen that uh, both companies, all companies, have just thrown right out the window that works. And somebody like uh, Tony Khan, who who claims himself as some sort of savant in professional wrestling, he should know the the very basics. Like he should be at these rehearsals with these wrestlers before they do their matches. Like, nope, that's not that one's not going to work. That's the level of the detail that that Tony Khan should be at. But I just know he's not because now you you've just informed me that e feds and. In video games, yeah, that's where short that's where people with short attention spans, no disrespect to you or anybody in the chat, but that is for people with short attention spans. And as we have seen, Tony Khan has a short attention span, he can't book past five weeks. Yeah, I'm ADHD as fuck, so I are I, you? Uh, so, so do I gotta you, treat you with kid gloves? Is that no. what, okay? <laughs> All right, uh, as long as you're yeah. not an autist, <laughs> uh, I might be, you never know, dude. Oh. I, this, <laughs> so Dave my Meltzer, kid tried to get me on that one time she was like i'm autistic i was like from what doctor <laughs> <laughs> you lying little <laughs> uh, yeah. anyways though dave Meltzer on, on public relations war speaking of autists between wwe and aew after stating that wwe supplied incorrect see, fast see why i need patreon cover. my man i'm about to offend your half of your audience it, bro <laughs> it's they'll be okay okay well i'll get it. it's just words to the media from the june 1 edition of aew collision so dave says sunday i start getting texts from people who are just like did they really only do 122k and 34,000 18 to 49 for collision and it's like man all you people are always like oh the numbers don't matter the numbers don't matter but then you can't help but just complain about the fake numbers and the numbers Dave, do the numbers matter or not, dude? You guys need to really make that clear. Anyways, though, Dave says this was a number supplied by WWE. So WWE invented the 122,000. Why would they even care when the show is only doing 300,000 anyways? Why wouldn't they make up a number about Dynamite, which actually can do 800,000 on occasion? Why wouldn't they do that? This is the dumbest conspiracy theory I've ever heard, dude. Right. And then uh, Dave goes on and says, those of you who feel like WWE isn't concerned with AEW, or it's a one-sided thing, AEW is in a war with WWE. And you know it's a pro wrestling war, okay? These pro wrestling wars are insidious. They are brutal. It's none of that. It's none of that. They're both in a public relations war. One side obviously is far more effective as far as getting news out there and controlling the media. But he and won't say who. Have you noticed that? He won't no. say and who. And this is why Dave's so dumb and this is projection because he is projecting because he knows that it's all the Twitterverse and AEW media. They're all shilling for AEW because they all want a piece of that pie. It's not WWE who gets the favorable media, dude, ever. It's like when Tony gets on, if Triple H outbursted like Tony Khan, yeah, as much as Tony Khan did, he would get covered poorly too. So you can't count all that. That's not like, oh, look at how bad AEW gets covered. No, dude. It's your guys is just minds on WWE too much. Um, like if Triple H was melting down the way Tony did, yeah, the sickos. Like if he was doing that, yeah, he would get covered poorly too, but he doesn't do stupid shit. One side's more effective controlling the media, a lot of the media, because they're afraid of not having access or whatever they're afraid of. WWE, obviously, whenever AEW has a badly rated show, WWE makes sure that the Fast Nationals get out. Now, in this case, I don't know how that number got out because that was not the Fast Nationals uh, for Collision. Again, the numbers, blah, blah, blah. So Dave, just conspiracy theorizing. What are your thoughts, Awful? That motherfucker can't wait till he proves somebody wrong on things. Like he won't, he won't ever tell anybody that he's wrong. He won't apologize, but he'll be quick to let you know, like Alfred Kanua, and just say the man's name, just at him. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> be a man, God. And the other thing is, is that for all this opining that Dave uh, Meltzer does, didn't he win like an Edward R. Murrow Award or some? Shit? some sort of high prestigious journalistic integrity award. Well, whatever that award was, stick to that plan, man. Nobody wants to hear you opine about anything. Just report the news. Did you ever want to hear what Ted Koppel thought about certain things or Sam Donaldson or even Wolf Blitzer or Anderson Cooper? No, man, just stick to the news. Be that guy. Yeah, more like the uh, general R. Dacted award yeah <laughs> <That's fucking> terrible <laughs> and when he says redacted, he means redacted. 
<laughs> bad, bad, yeah, bad jokes. <laughs> my so this light, the latest on AEW Pentel Zero Miedo amid reports of WWE being interested in him. Now they were interested in the Lucha Bros like way back for Black and Gold NXT, but um, Penta was unhappy sometime back when he wasn't allowed on shows with CMLL talent. So confirming what I said, but to a degree that looks like it's been worked out. Tony Khan indicated he was confident Penta would stay with the promotion. Oh, Tony, he was confident about Jade, too. Look how that turned out. So yeah. others have said Penta was looking at buying the rights to his name to make sure he could take the gimmick to WWE if necessary. The belief in other circles is Penta is looking at exploring his options when his current deal expires. So, yeah, he's out that. Um, Penta, how the f*** don't you own your own name already? And uh, exploring his options. His options are WWE or bust. Like, what else is he going to do? Go back to TNA? They there book him few, really well in TNA. There are very few smart wrestlers out there. So I I, I don't expect Pentagon or Penta to, <laughs> you know, to understand anything about copyrights or trademarks or agents. Well, hopefully someone teaches him. But uh, I hope Penta goes to WWE, no one, no. but I feel it won't happen. Why do you hope Penta goes to WWE? I mean, like, again, it's just like... You guys are trying to bloat the WWE roster like the I know WWE that's the one roster thing. is bloated, one thing. and it's just like put a freeze on all fucking hiring from AEW until you can get Ethan Page or Brian Pillman over or Jay Cargill to where they you are. want her. Yeah, well, Brian Pillman's a work in progress, and Ethan Page has yet to show me anything. But I don't, I don't uh, pretend to represent everybody in America. But at the same time. Do those people first before you go on trying to, to, to raid more talent from AEW. Please. Well, speaking of people who are good at copyrights and have good lawyers and uh, retain their name, AJ Styles, <laughs> good segue, mm -hmm. versus Cody Rhodes was planned for WWE Clash at the Castle as of early this week, but could be saved for Money in the Bank. As of early in the week, we, the plan was for this match to be on 615, but they uh, and likely to be announced on 67 but it also could be held off until Toronto. So Dave just saying every possibility again, meaning he doesn't know what he's talking about, but cool. And we know, yeah, we're getting the AJ Styles Cody rematch, which I'm down with, man. Um, Rhea Ripley is choosing to rehab her shoulder rather than undergo surgery. She is not expected back in time for SummerSlam. Um, what do you think? Do you think he Dave's being worked and she's going to rehab it, take more time off instead of surgery? Um, but surgery would get her back in time for SummerSlam, but she's just going to take the time. I encourage her to take her goddamn time off if she's hurt. What, what say you, Awful? Yeah, I mean, got to take the 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 proper time off. Um, I got to be honest with you, Phil. News like this doesn't doesn't do anything for me. I'm not I'm not in it for for learning about you know how long it's going to take somebody to rehab. Um, let's just hope that Rhea Ripley gets better and. Uh, you know, obviously comes back in, in good working condition. And I say that I say the same thing about uh, the AEW wrestlers as well. When Darby Allen got hurt and hit by a bus, and fuck, broke his toe and all that other <laughs> dumb shit. With I, yeah. into his face. I wish yeah. them well. You know, I'm not trying to see anybody um, get disastrously hurt. But at the same time, uh, Dave personally i could care less how long it's going to take rhea ripley to rehab her elbow or whatever the fuck it is at wrestle pierce say uh dave uh, wrestling observer via wrestle pierce says there's belief that there will be wwe involvement in the tna against all odds pay-per-view show on june 14 in chicago it would make a lot Get of sense out of here after what we just <laughs> saw <tonight. laughs> yeah you know she only jordan grace only showed up with an nx tna jacket on and fucking yeah. So uh, Dave goes on to say Logan Paul, who will be on SmackDown tonight, is expected to face L.A. Knight at WWE Clash of the Castle. Oh, shucks, you don't say, Dave. Yeah. So just another one. Captain where it's like, Obvious. Yeah. Where is this? Like, so yeah. Raquel Rodriguez was considered as a potential uh, challenger for Roxanne Perez at uh, Battleground. So instead of Jordan Grace, I guess they were considering Raquel Rodriguez. I don't believe this. I don't <laughs> Yeah, I think Dave was just getting worked. Like they didn't even tell Roxanne, and she wanted to be surprised for a shoot. So it's obviously going to be someone, not just Raquel. It's like right. what the fuck. I'm sorry, so, John JID popped me with his two comments. That was what did he funny. say here? And he chat. said, "I can't stop being mad. Just be happy. Build another fire outside and make some s'mores." <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so most in NXT didn't know, but there were more uh, than is there was more than was being led on, as Dave's basically saying. But we don't we can't trust what Dave ever says about WWE or TNA. He never no, knows he anything can't. about TNA until all of a sudden they're doing shit with WWE. Now he's got the inside scoop. It's like no, Dave. Like, it's clear as day that he does nothing but guesswork. It's just so obvious. Um, so there was belief that uh, Penta El Zero Miedo was looking. Okay, we covered that. He's looking to buy his name. But uh, both AEW and WWE have interest in Chad Gable, and WWE has made an excellent offer to keep him. He also has key people in <laughs> AEW pushing him to Tony Khan. So, like, what the fuck would Gable do if he went to AEW, though? And, like, Max Caster's sitting there talking shit about Shelton Benjamin. Like, who's pushing for Gable to come to to AEW? You know what I mean? You know what Tony Khan should have interest in? Selling tickets. Yeah, man. And, like, you hear Stop the Stop worrying movie. about the people that are coming in and out of the I know. They're always WWE talking system. about that. They're always talking about, oh, that leaves more room for money for the free agents and all this shit. That's what Dave was talking about last week. It's like, no, man. Stop. Your focus is in the wrong place. Like, you haven't made one star. Stop right. trying to take other people's stars. It's so crazy. Gable, I think, is in too big of a story to leave. But if I predict, he'll stay. But um, who's pushing him to Tony Khan? Like, I would just love to know this, what name that is. This is what EFED booking does to you. You yeah, don't dude. know how to create a wrestler. You don't know how to construct somebody from the ground up. You know, if they don't, if there's not a uh, CAW that involves its own move set and its own gimmick and, and you know, its own uh, apparel, he has no clue of how to to build a professional wrestler from the ground up. He doesn't even have like a, a, a developmental or training facility, which I've always been saying, like, yeah. go out to Kansas, find some barn, put a ring yeah. in it and tell all those motherfuckers to be there on Thursday morning. So that you can get some workouts in. And it's so easy to just like sit down all the goats, Jim Cornette, Arn Anderson, sit mm -hmm. down everyone, Ric Flair in a room, Tony Khan, and then you say your ideas to them. And then you plan out like a year of shit to them, fantasy mark book it, and then let them go, well, this needs to be like this, and this would work, or this is fucking stupid. Da 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 da. Like you could easily do that too. It's not like this, especially with the money and the resources you have. Instead, they're just getting offended and being like, nope, no criticism. You can't criticize my work. And right. it's like, man, fuck that, dude. Like, what's the old saying? It is the in the womb of criticism that great art is born or whatever the fuck it is, dude. Right. Um, not to get all philosophical on you guys. But uh, anyways, Vince McMahon, according to Dave, is not allowed at WWE headquarters gym that he helped design. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> so this is what happens when you uh, fucking are an at drain bamager one of the greatest aew shills shillingtons of all time he quotes unblock me drain bamager so former triple a wrestlers who weren't permitted before oh sorry we talked about it but tony dave says tony khan said that they have pretty much worked it out so that means the forbidden door rush and phoenix and all these guys can appear on it money talks i guess yeah no shit uh tony's been a really good partner of new japan he's trying to be a good partner for cmll i guess cmll got less stubborn MJF and it looks like MJF and Rush is going to be a forbidden door. Yeah, great forbidden door match. You know, like two AEW guys. Like, so what's the concept? Like, I, I don't know. It's so stupid. And uh, yeah, so it just proved me right though about all the CMLL. Sh a lot of people said it, but it it is what it is. But um, Dave Meltzer, and this is the last one of the evening, folks. Dave Meltzer stated that WWE purposely supplied incorrect fast national viewership numbers to the media for June 1 edition of Collision. So here's the conspiracy theory. Um, here's his uh, his quote. Um, well, we talked about it. It's a public relations yeah. war. WWE, obviously, whenever AEW has a badly rated show, so this is just more of an elaboration here, more of the quote. WWE makes sure that fast national gets out. So, like, how do they do that? That's what I just don't get. Like, how does WWE do that? Um, they leak it to Alfred? Like, God damn it, Tony. I don't know how the number got out. Well, then why are you saying it got out, Dave? Um, because that was not the Fast Nationals number for Collision. Again, the Fast Nationals are not exact, but they're not far off. And as Alfred pointed out, the Fast Nationals can indicate, like, even if they're wrong, let's say it's like a 7% fluctuation. Like, you can you can figure it out. Like, well, it'll be off by this much or whatever. He explains it better than me. Check out the podcast. Um, 
But yeah, guys, so that was um, another eclectic edition of Dave Meltzer's Dumb Moment of the Week.